that's what your team looks like when they've had some real time to rest and recuperate. How proud are you of that performance? Yeah, a lot. So I know how difficult it's Brighton away. They, <laughs> they, they are really good at many things. So yeah, they're really pleased for the, the game we played. Phil Foden is the only the third player of 23 years or younger to score 50 top flight Premier League goals under Pep Guardiola, Messi, Haaland and now Phil. The way he interchanged with Kevin was something that Brighton just couldn't handle tonight. Yeah, Phil is an exceptional player. He did play better than the last previous games. I give a continuity and after in the final third is so dangerous. So yeah, really, really good. His dynamics, his movements, his... He's a top top class player, so yeah, very very pleased and very happy, you know, for the way he played and the team played. It's the last thing you're worried about in a title race like this. Are you confident that Southgate will get the best out of him in that squad? Who? Gareth Southgate. Gareth knows exactly what he has to do with his team and his ideas about the players that he has at his disposal. So of course we're very pleased. He's a homegrown player for the Academy and playing with us with the regularity is so important. Kevin De Bruyne says he's not good at headers, but that was a beauty, a lovely assist by Kyle Owen. Yeah, really important and really important. Can make two assists, so yeah, really good. Um, Nottingham Forest, um, Nottingham Forest, Brighton fans very upset that a few of the decisions didn't get go their way. Phone looked like he probably fell for the first, and Gio Pedro looked like he I could have got. Understand. Yeah. I can understand. All the, all the managers and the teams, when you believe something like that, I can understand it. And you've been there, and now you go to Nottingham Forest. It's always a big atmosphere, but beware the wounded manager. Um, the team are angry, and they'd love to prove a point. Every game is difficult. What's today will be the next one, and every game has his special things, and you know, so we have five games left, and. I don't know what's going to happen because what happened in Liverpool can happen to us, can happen to Arsenal. So, but we know what to do. It's one game at a time now. We have we arrive at two or three. I am to to Manchester and tomorrow recovery and the after have to fly again to Nottingham. I'll go to Nottingham again early, but <laughs> at four. So recovery will be minor. So, but you know it's what it is. So we have to try and we're going to do it. You are one of the greatest. <laughs> tacticians and one of the greatest minds of the game definitely of this generation the leader has this been the most mentally taxing run in to the end of a Premier League season yeah but the best way is one game at a time so we cannot think I know we have one month exactly today in one month time we're at that time uh, right now we have already played the final FA Cup against United so it's just one month, so we're going to do everything, but it's a lot, a lot of games, five games. It's not just one game live or two games game. And I can imagine, so how difficult it is. Nothing will be full um, spurs away, so it's tough, tough. So that's why I relax and, and do, we, we did our job is in, in, in three days, in two days and a half time, we had to do the next. Like I said before the game, that their form just hasn't quite been good enough in this second half of the season. It, it's sort of petered out a little bit. The energy around the club, there was a real good vibe last season, uh, this year with Europe. And since they, I think it, probably in the manner that they, they let themselves down in Rome and, and, and exited Europe, that, that's, there's just been a little bit of flatness, for want of a better way, word, around the club. Is their season petering out a little bit now? Unfortunately, it does yeah. seem that way. They just can't seem to, to find a foothold and, and gather any momentum to try and push for those remaining European spaces. Yeah, OK. Uh, well, that game at the Amex uh, means that uh, the match week concludes down on the south coast. Uh, let's uh, remind you then of the uh, six games, uh, how they played out. It started, of course, uh, at the Emirates. Arsenal starting the week's action off with that crashing win over Chelsea. Uh, ten men Bournemouth beating Wolves at Molyneux Palace, picking up a third straight win against Newcastle with Mateta scoring both. Everton's derby win over Liverpool put a huge dent in the visitors' title hopes, but boosting the toffee survival chances. At Manchester United beating Boston club Sheffield United in what was a frantic game at Old Trafford. And it's finished 4-0 to Manchester City at the Amex. So Arsenal end the week, uh, or the match week I should say, top of the table on 77 points, just one point ahead of the defending champions Manchester City who have a game in hand still. Liverpool in third, three points off the summit. Villa lead Spurs in the race for fourth. 
by six points, having played two games more. Uh, United move up a place to six. Manchester United, that is on 53. Three ahead of Newcastle, West Ham at eighth, Chelsea ninth, and it's Bournemouth who've snuck into the top half. At the other end, it, uh, it's looking like four teams are involved in that relegation scrap. Bottom club, Sheffield United, 10 points adrift with just 12 left to play for. They will be relegated on Saturday if they lose at Newcastle. Burnley have three points to make up on Forest. Luton have just the one. Everton in 16th and now eight clear of the bottom three. And it was an efficient performance, really, as far as the defending champions were concerned. Six shots on target, resulting in the four goals. They had 14 shots in all. Somehow, the expected goals were... Under one and a half. I'll get you, Owen, to explain that in a second. Um, but Brighton very much second best uh, across the 90 minutes. And for Manchester City, could you argue they barely got out of second gear to record the three points, Owen? They probably didn't need to, to be fair. Um, you know, Brighton made it so easy for them. And when you make mistakes against Manchester City, the guys are too good. They're just going to punish you. I understand Brighton want to play and play between the lines and from the goalkeeper, but... The way City set up today, that was always going to happen. And then when they're that clinical and you give them a couple of goals, then forget about it. It was the perfect tonic for, for City, really, after what has been a couple of really difficult games against Real and Chelsea. Mm. Come to Brighton, um, I, I feel as though Brighton played right into their hands. Even, even Pep's comments about Roberto De Zerbi, um, how much he admires him, it kind of, I suppose plays up to people's egos and you want, you want to impress who he's ultimately the best manager in the world. You think he's buttering up before the game? <laughs> well, <laughs> a little bit. That, it's, I mean, you had the best of it, Alec Ferguson, didn't you? I mean, they, that is what the, the, the best do. It's mind games, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But mind game, be... but he, didn't, he never used to butter up the opposition, or would he? No, no but there's but, different but, ways to do it. But we, but we would... The thing is, I think with our teams, we could play different ways. So we could play on the counter. Or we, we could out possession. We could out football. It was this... Brighton side, they only really play one way. And Pep knows that. And if he looks at the video, he knows Brighton are going to play that way. And I do think he is probably buttering up a bit saying, well, oh, you guys play some great stuff. And then it's 4-0 later. Do you know what I mean? I think sometimes you'd be better off just going a little bit longer, you know, and surprise, surprise them. But obviously they knew they were going to play because they play great stuff. But mm. I think he's definitely buttering up a bit. Yeah, I've been saying slightly one-dimensional from Brighton. Uh, well, yeah, I mean, listen, you've got a taking into consideration circumstances well. They're missing their best players, their yeah. best outlets. And I honestly think this City side do concede goals and they did get in good positions tonight. They just made the wrong, wrong options. But it, it was before they got in those positions, it was the naiveness of trying to get out. A couple of times, Belieber could have gotten the half term. Well, like Caicedo last season and... He's the most expensive player in the Premier League. Yeah. He, he would have got out and all of a sudden we would have been like, that. that's brilliant from Brighton. But those, those individual, I suppose, decisions, they, they, they can paint a whole different picture on, on what you're trying to do. For City, though, it's four league wins on the spin. I mean, they've scored 17 goals in the process. It's City reverting to tight right now, is it not, in the Premier League? This is what they normally do, isn't it, really? I think come the business end of the season when they, when they need to win and score goals they regardless of who's playing or how they're playing they seem to to turn it on and get the results that they need to get and they came here and they didn't I wouldn't say they necessarily started great I don't think the game was a great watch to be honest with you first of all but they 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 had a good moment in the game where they they scored that fantastic goal and then from that moment onwards it was just kind of in a way, how many goals are City going to score? And that's the way it kind of, for, for me, it seemed to go. Do you think it's taken longer for us to see this City in this Premier League season than usual? I would say so in some ways, but I would also say that I think the other teams in the league have got better. Hmm. So with them coming off the treble win, everybody's going to be out to beat them. Everyone, pretty much everyone they've played, they've played with a very, very low block. If Phil Foden pretty much wasn't on fire, he's the one that's been breaking them down because Kevin's been injured. Haaland's been out a lot. So they, they've, they've had a w kind of weird front three, four because they haven't had the players that they wanted for the whole season. But whatever reason, Phil stepped up and he's taken and he stepped up again and this with Kevin as well. So I think in many ways, they might have, they're playing differently. They're playing well, but they're not the same City team as last year or the year before. I think every year they affect and win games completely different to the way they have done over the years. And I think that's why sometimes it's hard for a lot of teams to, to kind of deal with them because you think they're going to play a certain way, but they hurt you from somewhere else. Like before, we're all worried about Kevin. Now you're worried about 
Kevin and Phil Foden. And Phil's the one that gets the two goals. Whereas, say, last year or the year before, that would have been Kevin that was either got two assists or scored two yeah. of those goals. It's funny, Glenn, you talk about them maybe kick-starting that run later than usual. They're actually unbeaten in 18. And they've dropped points in only three of those games with three draws. So there is clearly some momentum going their way right now. Now, we've all, for a long time now, waxed lyrical about Kevin De Bruyne and what he's got in his armoury. Maybe a headed goal isn't one of them. Uh, up until today, Owen, this really was a collector's item, wasn't it? I mean, to this be honest, if he was going to score a headed goal, it had to have a little bit of finesse on it. <laughs> <laughs> he's that type of player, yeah. isn't he? I mean, who heads a ball like this with, <laughs> with a bit of spin and lobs the keeper? I mean, it's, it's a brilliant ball from Kyle Walker. Kevin's the best at sitting, nestling in a little position. And to be fair, I'd, normally he'd probably go with his, his, his oh, foot. But yeah. um, this is the thing I love about, you know, Pep. He knows, obviously, with playing Alvarez up there and folding, they can rotate. Foden goes into that little pocket there and Hecke falls and Alvarez adjusts his position. Kev goes to where Alvarez was. How about this for a little pick out? And then a finesse looping I didn't head chip header. Mad. I mean, that is, that is amazing. It's the power he generates from it. I don't think I could generate that much power from that, to be honest with you. And he's just like, kind of like, like you said, the backspin on it as well. It's almost the only place you can go in the goal, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Yeah. It's completely almost wrong foot. The goalkeeper was expecting almost a bullet header and it just loops up into that top corner. But it was exactly what City needed at that point. Yeah, that's almost as rare as a header from Sean Wright Phillips. <laughs> who, also, who also managed one in his league career. Oh, but that was Sean. Yeah, yeah, there. Salmon in the back right force. Yeah. Where did that jump come from? <laughs> it's always been there. <laughs> <laughs> Looks yeah, like Brenda Buller, that. Yeah, it's easy. <laughs> Light work. <laughs> like Calvin Luna in the back stick. <laughs> Actually, here's another one. Between you and Owen, how many headed goals do you think you guys got in Two. the Premier League? One each. One. He didn't get one. <laughs> I wasn't allowed that far. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go to 2-0 then for Manchester City. Now, this has proved to be quite controversial. Uh, it came from a free kick. Should it have been given in the first place, Glenn? No, not at all. Um, I mean, and it's easy to say that with hindsight, but he's, he's skipping through a couple of players. Uh, that's probably not the best angle of it. A couple of nibbles, no real contact. Uh, I can understand why the referee's been sucked into giving it, but it's this contact here. He's going to take his other step. He kicks the back of Belieber, and that, I, I don't think for any of us sat here, is a penalty. Uh, to be fair, the, the, the ref had an amazing position of it. He was right there, but... And then this happens, you know... Off Pascal Gross has probably been their best player this season, so unfortunate. And uh, Phil Foden saying, Give me the player of the year. That's, you know what I mean? I'm, <coughs> I'm going to score one, I'm going to get two, and I'm going to be the best player in the Premier League. The kid is just amazing. Yeah, and a milestone goal for him because that's his 50th Premier League goal, followed very soon after by his 51st. Sean, what about Brighton's part in this? There's too many errors. I think we, we've all spoken about it. Brighton have so many opportunities to play out of this press. There's so many, there's one here out wide, then he can play up there. But they're just taking too many chances and Bernardo gets that touch and feels just in the right place and the Sean, way he just passes that in. You know what that reminds me of? Because, you know, it's like, obviously they can go long there, but that reminds me of when you do a keep ball with no goals. Yeah. No, and you're just yeah. trying to keep it for the sake of keeping <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. Just, yeah, you, you know, Steve, but, you've got dunk on there, especially when the press is on from City in that century. Why go back in there? City are so good that at that. on that keep ball, though, normally you would still pass out wide to where the space is <laughs> yeah. to keep that to keep the ball, but yeah. they don't. They just keep playing in those dangerous areas. Is this, na is this the naivety you talked about, Glenn, earlier? Yeah, because I think they, are, they had three different opportunities to get out of that. And to go back in four times, I think that's naive. And, and like I say, if, if, if they got out of that, we'd be waxing lyrical about how good they are at breaking that press. And, and that is ultimately probably, we, we touched at the top of the show, didn't we, what teams haven't been doing to them as much this year. Mm. City did it today. The bigger clubs tend to do it because they don't care so much if you beat that press. But they just, just showed a little bit of na naivety by going back in all the time. Do but, you... I mean, it's a really good point because, actually, you think about no Macaus and no Caicedo, they're getting out of there. Mm. Yeah. You know, they're getting, they're taking on the back foot and spinning out. So, obviously, they've got a young, long players and a ballet, but he's only 20. Plays into Barco. I think he's, what, is he 18? Yeah. You know, so the, the young guys, I think when you've got the top players in there, they'll make better decisions where the young guys are making a couple of mistakes. But also, they're, all, they're both new to this yeah. system as yeah. well. And league. Yeah, so once they get used to it, I think maybe next year, he turns out there and, yeah. they're away, and they beat that press. How will that go down with Roberto De Zerbi if he's encouraging that style of play. I mean, because we've heard from a lot of managers this season, um, even from those that have come up, 
the likes of Luton or Burnley, which is, yeah, we take risks, but if they make a mistake, that's on us. So, you know, they're ultimately holding their hands, saying we'll be responsible if it doesn't work. Yeah, I, th I think throughout his tenure at Brighton, we can see that is the style of play that he wants and he wants to try and invite that press and beat that press. So I don't, I don't think he'll be tearing strips off the lads, mm. but I think he'll probably give it 24 hours and he'll be sitting down and be saying to Barco and Belieba, especially, these are the areas where you make a difference, where you go to that next level, like your Caicedos and your McAllisters. Yeah. Talking of Barco, um, unfortunately, it was at the heart of the fourth goal for Manchester City. Did this look pre-planned to you, Sean? Um, 100%. Um, from us, you, you very rarely see Walker that high, but I think as soon as Brighton changed their formation, I feel like Pep said something and they, Edison has noticed that straight away because he's just gone, look, he, he sees it and he's already itching forward. He's got to see him there, right? He's well, got to I pay mean, more his, attention. His teammates even point it out and... Even, Last thing you want to do is get, let, give Kyle a head start. Like, yeah. Exactly. I mean, he, he might be new to the Premier League, but he'll have watched him for 20 years and he, he knows how fast Kyle Walker Even is. Even on FIFA, he's quick. Everyone knows how quick he is. The, yeah, like you say, he's the last person you want to give. And, and again, that, 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 that buys into that naiveness that I speak about. You've just got to give yourself 10 yards because he's actually stepping into an area where he's not going to affect the play. Yeah. But, is that handball there, by the way? It, it appears I, to strike Kyle Walker's left hand. 100% handball. <laughs> He's going to say that on it. Nobody knows that hand ball is anymore, do they? Yeah. If it's not deliberate, it doesn't matter. If it's the assist maker. Yeah, no, it wasn't deliberate. No, I, I, didn't, I didn't even realise it touched him until you lot talked about it because I didn't really see the ball change the direction. It seemed to go the same way it was going. In, in I mean, no. I mean, he's clutching anyway. He's but clutching. But it, would, it would be, wouldn't he? No, like, no. They've had a bad day. No, I'm, I'm joking with that one. That was, that was. Um, talk, talking of clutching, no, I'm only joking, but should Brighton have had a penalty? <laughs> yeah. 100%. <laughs> these two, with their City hats on, don't think it is a penalty, but this is 100% a penalty. The, by the way, for him to get into the position is really absolutely brilliant. He dances through the four or five City players there. And for me, that 100%. Next step is shooting. I can't understand how these two are looking at me with a straight face telling me that is not a penalty. I th now, see, I... I if I feel like he's got to focus on shooting, I think as soon as he he's goes gone, there, he's allowed to next swing. Next step. Yeah, but swing. <laughs> At least try and shoot. He doesn't even think about shooting. He's thinking about that contact to go to ground straight away. We're hearing it's, it was minimal impact and he went to ground too easily. But I'm in agreement with that. I, I've, I've seen penalties given this. <laughs> oh, that, uh, he's, I've, seen penalties. I've seen them given, but uh, he... He I thinks think more so. contact's is... coming, and that's why he's going down a little bit. He's played for fraction early. Yeah. yeah. And when you go down early, you never get it. Yeah. You, you, the refs are, mm. and to be fair, the ref was in a decent position as well. Mm. Pascal Gross was going mad at the referees. He was literally that close, saying, "Give it." You know, exactly, buddy. Exactly, because Pascal could see it was one. <laughs> <laughs> but look, in the end, uh, City are breathing down Arsenal's necks. They're uh, only one point behind the Gunners. Let's get some post-match reaction from the City head coach, Pep Guardiola. You said to us before the game, it's all about the game that's in front of you, but you've made a statement tonight. How big a statement, other than just winning the game, have you made? The statement is three points. This is only a statement. We have, in two days, we arrive today at 2 a.m. at home, and after tomorrow, we have to fly to Nottingham and another one. So this is a statement. Win the game because we know what we have to do to to arrive at the end and try to fight to be champion. You've spoken about that many times before, that you do know what you have to do. How important is that knowledge at this moment with the race so close? We have been here in the past, but that doesn't mean the fact, just for the fact that we have been here, it's going to happen. We have to do the, the things make it happen. So we come here and an opening that uh, we know Brighton strength, uh, never give up. We saw in the second half, but in the in the first half we found all the rhythm, the right rhythm to play and find a field. We were scoring the in the right moment in the first time we arrived, and the second in a mm -mm, I don't know it was fault, and so in the right moment we punished them and yeah, won a really really important game. Brighton away always is really tough. All Premier League teams know it. On top of those three points, it's four goals and you've cut that goal difference with Arsenal to single figures. How, how crucial could that all prove to be in the coming games? Yeah, it's difficult to cut them. So the, the margin is so big. So they score a lot of goals, they don't concede. 
<clears throat> of course, you can score goals and goals will be better, but the target is, is win the game. So we have five games left, is a lot. So the tough ones. So Nottingham for the relegation zone and Fulham away and Spurs away always is difficult. So a part of the two games at home. So one game at a time. So now recover and, and Nottingham Forest. You have a very special group of players and special individuals. Kevin De Bruyne, his first ever headed Premier League goal, but not an ordinary header. How technically difficult was that? Yeah, it's not as his strength, but I'm more than welcome. I invite him if he score more goals. Perfect. Phil Foden as well, two for him tonight. His 51st Premier League goal in, in total. How much has he grown in your eyes as a player? And is he a contender this year for, for one of the players of the season amongst many? Yeah, for sure. But uh, what he wants is win the Premier League. So in his age, he won a lot of titles. And of course, his influence in the final third, in the goals, in the in everything today was playing a little bit better than the previous last two or three games. He was a little bit more accelerated, more anxious. Today was more calm. The, making, the decision making was really good and the talent of the goal is always good. We spoke also before the game about one of the challenges for all of the coaches is the rest, the recuperation, looking after those players. How big is that challenge for you at the moment other than just winning the games? Not a lot, especially the next one. After you have two weeks, we have the next two games against Wolves and Fulham. We have a long week. It will not be a problem, but this week will be a tricky one. So, because they are so fast, uh, Nottingham, they are a good pattern and uh, you have to prepare well. And just finally, Pep, after the week we've had with Arsenal, yourselves and Liverpool, in your opinion, is everyone still involved in this race? Yeah. Many things can happen. So, what happened in Liverpool, the drop to two, two games against Crystal Palace and yesterday against Everton can happen to us, can happen to Arsenal. Nobody's safe for that. So it's just to be calm and be happy today for the victory because we we come here for terrible long schedule. But uh, the players still they 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 are there and and now it's just recover and and think to the next one. Well done. We're enjoying the race. Thank you so much. An interesting line actually about the title race. He's not discounting anyone at this stage. Is he saying that for the players' benefit, or do you think he genuinely believes that? Oh, no, he believes that. I think he's right. I think we've seen now with Liverpool as well, teams are going to drop points. I think they might even... What, between drop... now and the end of the season? Yeah, I, th I, I do think, you know, some, everybody's got tricky games. Arsenal obviously had the, the, the hardest ones. Liverpool second and City had the easiest running. But I still think there's tricky games in there, you know, and we've seen the surprises. You know, you, you look at yesterday, you think Everton are going to lose Liverpool comfortably, you know, and in the league does bring surprises. So... Um, but no, City are in, in, in a great position. They're comfortable right now, but I do think we might get a couple of surprises. You know, we can get some more post-match reaction now from the City dressing room. Delighted to say, um, two-goal hero, Phil Foden, joins us live pitch side from the South. Phil, many congratulations. Good to see you as always. Uh, a big win in terms of the title race for Manchester City tonight. Yeah, really important win. Um, you know, Brighton as well are a fantastic side. They love to play football and... They made it difficult at times playing man to man, but um, you know I thought the way we attacked at the right times and found the pockets of space um, was very good in the first half, and then in the second half it's a little bit more difficult. But overall, um, yeah, delighted with the result. On the personal front, I mean, you love facing Brighton. What is it about you and the Seagulls? I'm not sure. I seem to score most of my goals against them, but um, yeah, they're a fantastic team. Like I said, maybe the first one was a little bit lucky and settled the nerves a little bit to, to go two up. Um, but yeah, I'm just in sc enjoying scoring goals at, at the moment and enjoying the position that I'm playing. Phil, I have to ask you, were you a tad fortunate to get that free kick? <laughs> very, yeah. Like I said, it was very <laughs> good, but, you know, I'll take it. First thing you asked at half time, did it count or was it an own goal? <laughs> yeah, uh, well, look, thanks for your honesty, but it, it feels like a night that most things went right for Manchester City. Um, obviously, Alvarez getting back on the score sheet was important. But Kevin De Bruyne is scoring a header. We've not, we've not seen that before in the Premier League. Yeah, it, apparently it was his first header in the Premier League, wasn't it? It was, yeah. Right? <laughs> yeah. Does he do that like... in training much? No, never. <laughs> I think it's a new yeah, Barnet. <laughs> um, yeah, what an header from Kev. It was unbelievable. Um, it seemed to come out of nowhere as well. So, yeah, delight he must be delighted with that.
Um, Phil is Sean, man. Congratulations on your two goals. Just a quick one. How are you feeling like after the two games? I know you had a couple of days off. Did that help you guys for this game, going into this game, knowing how Brighton normally try and keep possession of the ball? Yeah, definitely. The, the gaff gave us two days off and I thought it helped to come back in in the best shape we could, um, you know, because Brighton had a, a better time to prepare for the game. And we knew that we had to we had to be right at it and with our pressing as well. So, yeah, I think the two days off definitely helped us um, with the tough schedule that we had. I feel it's on Hargu. Just a quick one on, obviously, no Erling Haaland. And without him playing, you guys, feels like you guys can all kind of rotate positions, you know, yourself and Alvarez. And, and to be fair, it worked beautifully. You know, I think that little rotation where Van Hecke follows you into, into midfield and then obviously Kevin and Alvarez adjust their positions. You guys obviously play different, but you're almost harder, different to play against when, when he's not playing. Yeah, it was something we worked on. Um, we knew that Brighton liked to go man to man. So, um, you know, you have to move into space and sometimes change positions to, to confuse them. And I thought today we did that brilliantly. Any time I moved over to the other side, Kev switched with me. So it was just nice to rotate and um, show a different side to us as well without Earl. You know, I think Julian offers a little bit more. His, his work rate is unbelievable and... Um, he's, he's someone that never gives up, so um, I'm happy that he, that he scored today because he deserves it. Do you think that fluid front line makes you more unpredictable? Yeah, definitely. Um, when you rotate and change positions, it's, it's a nightmare for defenders to, to close you down. So, yeah, I thought we did it brilliant today. And five games left now for Manchester City. You're tucked in behind Arsenal, just a point off the Gunners. Um, it looks like your time and your rise at just the right time with that game in hand. Yeah, hopefully, um, you know, we've got the experience to to go on and win every game. We, we've done it before, so yeah, we're a calm team. We don't really think too far ahead. We, we just focus on ourselves and take it game by game and then see where it takes us. Brilliant. Listen, well done on your goals today. Always good to talk to you. Good luck for the rest of the season. Cheers, thank you. Cheers, guys. Nice. Go get player of the year, Phil. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Manchester City's um, Phil Foden. Interesting what he had to say. Um, how City have almost two plans with and without Haaland and can be almost more unpredictable without him. And they'd win the league with both plans. Yeah. You know, that, and, that's, <laughs> and that's quite something. That, and they were brilliant before he came and all of a sudden he comes and then he makes them different. Um, he gets goals in big games. He gets goals in bunches. But obviously, with, I think when you get guys like, you know, Alvarez and Foden and Bernardo Silva about that goal where Van Hecke comes out, they worked on that. Yeah. And everybody adjusts their position. Phil goes and then Alvarez comes over, Kevin De Bruyne, they worked on that. And so it's... And Pep's playing chess out there, and that's why he—that's why he's the best. And these players kind of fit that model. Harland is kind of, you know, the—he's, you know, he's, he's bulldozing everybody and smashing the ball into the back and that. So to have both, one that could be a trip hazard is Tottenham away. Yeah. And and I just feel as though Tottenham, only one that could be a trip hazard, trip hazard is Tottenham away. Yeah. And and I just feel as though Tottenham. It'll be a toe-to-toe -to -toe game. I think, I think both coaches will, will, will totally go for it and both will concede chances. But I just feel as though City in this mood have just got that killer in. The only one that could be a trip hazard is Tottenham away. Yeah. And, and I just feel as though Tottenham... Before he came and all of a sudden he comes and then he makes them different. Um, he gets goals in big games. He gets goals in bunches. But obviously, with, I think when you get guys like you know, Alvarez and Foden and Bernardo Silva and Kevin De Bruyne, they all fight for their life down there. Fulham are... A pretty unique team at times. You know, they can be really very unpredictable. Yeah. So, but yeah, I think that that Tottenham game is, is the big one for them. Would you say so as well, Spurs? Although you said Brighton was going to be the trickiest. Yeah, he was just I, being humble, wasn't he? No, well, I, I kind of, you know, what I kind of think some of the games that they have are sometimes trickier. They they say it might be an easier run, but that's just based on the names, that positioning in the team, Arsenal's and Liverpool's, and they managed to come through that. I wouldn't say so much as unscathed, but without dropping too many points and that kept them where they are in the table. So it's desperate for them not to win the title with their arch rivals. <laughs> won't it? Them, yeah. you know, and, and, and Spurs, they're going to have the biggest say. It, it, their form in the next three or four games, they're, they're going to be the one for Arsenal. is huge. North London derby. If anyone's desperate for them not to win the title <laughs> with their arch rivals, it, won't it? Them, yeah. you know, and, and, and Spurs, they're going to have the biggest say. It, it, their form in the next three or four games, they're, they're, they're going to be the ones, whoever they can pull a result out against, that, that's what it'll boil down to. City have lost on each of their visits to Spurs' new stadium. 
I was there for, for the game. Premier League. With my son. They, to be fair, they got hammered, yeah. but they've somehow found a way to win the game. Yeah. But City can't afford for that to happen again. No, but I think the way Tottenham play is going to play into Pep's hands. You know, they, they, they put the fullbacks into those <laughs> midfield positions. We saw what Brighton did. And should do the same. Or similar. Yeah. And, and Pep will have a game plan for it. He just played Chelsea. Uh, City are uh, one of the best teams in the world. Uh, we deserve to lose the game. Uh, uh, for sure, uh, they played a great game. We try in the first half to play our with our qualities, uh, but uh, we made uh, mistakes in the first and second and third goal uh, as well. Uh, if you close the first half, three uh, nil, it's very tough to to play in the second the second half. But the free kick given to Phil Foden, it didn't look like there was any real contact to justify that. That took them into a significant lead. And then maybe, Gio Pedro, many feel that that should have been a penalty for you and there were other calls that you should have had. Pep Guardiola said he's actually sympathetic to that. Sì, sì, l'ultimo. No, the referees are human like me, like you, and and they they can make mistakes. Uh, we didn't lose for the referees' responsibilities. I do understand that, but and we we certainly not on a mission to dismiss the referees. But VAR is in place to override those decisions. Are you a little disappointed tonight by them? Well, it's, uh, I have a lot of problems uh, about uh, injuries players, about uh, to help the young player to improve, to progress. Uh, and the last, my problem in my head is the, the performance of the referee this night and the next games as well. And, that, and that's the cruelty, isn't it, of your position? Because you look at the last three substitutes that Pep Guardiola brought on. They could start in most teams. And you have been dealt a tough blow with those injuries. What can you do next season when you get those players back? Well, we work. We try to work. To, to, we try to give our best, my best, with passion. Uh, I'm suffering a lot this season. Uh, I think I'm working harder than last season. I think we are not in the, the, the right condition to compete this season. Do you hope you'll be able to reinvest in the summer to give you greater depth to manage those times you have these injuries? I don't, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know what is the plan of the, the club. Uh, Tony is a big fan, he's an owner, but uh, a fan as well of this club. And I'm waiting to for, for speak with him and to, to make, uh, to make a, a plan for the future. One thing I did notice that you don't often see from Manchester City, quite a few long balls, and I think that's because they know how good you are on the ball. I'm sure you would have noticed that. Is that a bit of a compliment that he, Pep Guardiola is trying to find ways around your players on the ball? Il fatto che City abbia giocato lunghe palle è un complimento che Guardiola ti ha fatto, visto che solitamente loro giocano corto, quindi aveva paura di affrontarti in quel modo. No, they play long ball when uh, you are uh, man to man. Uh, I'm sorry because the, f the f fifth and the fourth goals are uh, two two mistakes, but two mistakes because uh, because uh, Valentin Barco and Valentin Barco played very well, one of the best uh, players uh, for us uh, on the pitch. Uh, it was the first game, and maybe he he doesn't know. Everything's in the, the build-up and everything's in uh, in the defensive phase because it, for him it was the first game. But for sure, is the is the future of Brighton, uh, like Carlos Baleva, like uh, Ofia, Ofia, like uh, Mahoney, uh, like Joe Pedro, like uh, a lot of young players, and we have to be positive because we are working for the future of Brighton. Yeah, yeah, yeah.